Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. All right, RF interference. This is where RF gets into places you don't want it, and it causes problems. Uh, the question is how to stop it. You can see, for example, if you've got an RF uh, problem uh, on your television, when you transmit, you can see artifacts in the picture. Um, you may hear them on the stereo. You may hear them on a portable phone. Um, they may come back into your own equipment. So this section is on RF interference. It talks first about filters. Uh, filters are not the do-all, end-all, but they can help. Uh, for example, uh, if you find that you have some RF in your uh, shack, you may be transmitting harmonic radiation that you don't want. And a low-pass filter, a harmonic uh, filter on your output can help a little bit. Often the problem with uh, consumer electronics is just flat overload. Your signal's too strong and the equipment is not strong enough to uh, keep that interference out. By the way, that's the case most of the time. Uh, very little equipment is properly shielded and bonded. Uh, it can be a problem if you're getting into your neighbor's equipment. Uh, they don't like that <laughs> at all. Uh, the first thing you need to do when that happens is, uh, first of all, be friendly. No neighbor likes you to bark at him or anything uh, and certainly if you say I'm gonna operate whether you like it or not that is a great way to create a neighborhood enemy don't do that um, say uh, I'm sorry you're getting interference can we take a look at it and if you can show that they're getting interfered with when you're not even on the air then um, you obviously are not the cause of the interference. Uh, but you can help your neighbor. It uh, mentions in here ferrite beads and little things. It's got a little section in here on ferrites as the RF buster. Uh, ferrites are available from electronic supply houses. I used to be able to get them at Radio Shack. Of course, there's no more uh, Radio Shack. Um, so there's a couple ways this can happen. One, fundamental overload. It just completely overloads the circuits in there. Not much you can do except separate the equipment more. Um, you also have the problem of uh, getting RF coming in either the power line for a piece of equipment or through the antenna and uh, RF, uh, these uh, ferrites can really help uh, with that problem. Um, also you may have uh, harmonics on your signal uh, the filter can help with those. Uh, you may have spurious emissions if you are overdriving your audio uh, for your single sideband transmitter. It is possible, very indeed, is likely indeed, that you will be splattering, and that splatter can uh, often cause interference. Um, so you want your microphone cable to be properly shielded. Uh, the mic that came with your equipment is properly shielded, you're okay with that. Um, if you have a problem with your neighbor, be kind and tr try in good faith to help them. Understanding that if you're operating properly uh, and it's not your fault, uh, you need to gently tell them that they're the ones that have to pay for the ferrites and, and things like that. That can be a little uh, touchy sometimes. Now, there's one other thing that can cause interference to you. Uh, there's such a thing as uh, FCC Part 15, and uh, that's a section of the regulations. The amateur regulations are Part 97. Part 15 has to do with unintentional radiators. Uh, these are devices like electric fences, power lines, things like that, that do not normally emit but can. Um, like an electric fence, if it's got a place where it sparks, that will create RF interference. Um, 
So there's some uh, things that it talks about in here and what to do with part 15 devices. Uh, it can take sometimes some uh, sensitive negotiations. Many years ago I had trouble with a neighbor I was getting into uh, with my single sideband into their TV and I went over and listened to it and it was extremely minor but they were quite upset so I actually decided for the next few months to operate CW and uh, um, uh, digital modes uh, until they forgot about it and then I could go back to the single sideband because the interference was so small it just was I don't know why they were even complaining but people do people have strong ideas on, on the way their home should be thanks for following along with the videos and the book after you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers come back here for the next video the ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.